forwarding letter. And my only advice is that uh, uh, this is not the standard expected. In fact, the letter should have said the things that the CS said uh, when he he gave his response that we are hereby attach the following documentation in response to your letter so that we can know that it covers all these issues. So, Chair, allow me to begin uh, my questions. Uh, Honorable CS, you, this approval by the PPP committee is the crux of the matter. So we are going to focus there. You have repeatedly referred to approval by the PPP committee, first at its meeting held on 13th March 2024, and then there is also reference to approval at a meeting of, uh, this, let me, uh, ordinary meeting held on 3rd May 2024. I perused these documents at length. I do not see the minutes of these two meetings. Did you attach the minutes of the uh, meetings of the PPP committee that you have referenced? Honorable CS, I, I like that uh, my questions are answered. I, I finish with you, then it will be handed to somebody else. Did you submit minutes of those two meetings? Say yes, yes. or no? You can answer that. Uh, the minutes are not uh, supplied, but they are available. We can give the minutes. You know, these, the minutes are very bulky. So you will we, agree with me, CS, that if you wanted to know what a meeting, the decision the meeting took, it is critical for us to have the minutes of that meeting. It's critical to have those minutes. This committee will get the minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Now, I want to address something you've also touched on on your response. Uh, if you go to, Honorable Chair, if you, if you go to section, uh, uh, I'm getting mixed up. Uh, CS, who is supposed to submit uh, a PIP to the committee, the PPP committee? That should be done by the directorate. Actually, the process is the contracting authority submits to the directorate. Correct. Which is at the National Treasury. Now, you have attached a letter here. A letter dated 1st of March 2024. That is signed by PIP. Now, the, it, the law says contracting authority, Correct. but contracting authority is domiciled, in this case, in that state department. And the procedure in government is usually when you are communicating to another ministry, it comes through the parent ministry, the state department. So there's nothing completely wrong. So long as you indicate that that PIP proposal was to the KAA, which is the contracting authority. So the letter... Yes, if the law was followed, the contracting authority being KAA should be the one submitting the PIP because it is delivered to them. Now let's move on to something you've touched on about the membership of this PPP committee. And but, but, but Chair, with your intelligence, I think yes, we need to yes. sort out that. The contracting authority here is KAA. Yes. They receive PIP. They decided, and which there's nothing wrong because the law does not. If the law is is uh, stating that they should not, then that's a different story. But the, so long as AAA has submitted the PIP to the line PS, and then the line PS submits it to Treasury, indicating that this is the PIP received by KAA. So the, I don't see any ambiguity there. Sure, sure. Uh, perhaps that is the view that Honorable Bombardi would want to have. I want to read you the law as it is, not as it ought to be. Section 40, subsection 4, the contracting authority, which is KAA, shall submit the privately initiated proposal to the directorate for assessment and approval. I want to move on because I have very little time. Chair, you will understand why I'm asking this question. You spoke about the membership of the PPP committee, yes. Honorable Chair. You have taken us through the members of that PPP committee. You will agree with me that in fact, if you look at the letter of 1st March 2024, 
It is a letter originating from a member of the PPP committee to another member of the PPP committee. Isn't that the case, Honorable CS? Yes. That is bound to happen because I've already said that even if he was not a member, he would be co-opted. So just, I, just what so, the letter is saying, if yeah. it is coming from the CS for transport, the PS for transport, going to the PS uh, Chris Kipto of National Treasury, those are both members of the PPP committee. The transport PS is a co-opted member. They are by both virtue, members of the committee. By virtue, is not a designated member as per the law, but the law says you co-opt the line PS. And so he is a member, co-opted member. He is communicating a PIP which was received by KAA, and by the way, KAA is the one that communicated to the PS. So where is that correspondence in your, in your document? That, that can be found, that okay. we can touch. Let's yes. move to an extra D, which is the evaluation report. You have taken us through the standard that has been set by the law when it comes to evaluation of this proposals, Chair. I want us to go to the evaluation report at an extra D. Are we there, Honorable Bombardi? Are we there? Yes, so there is a summary of the due diligence that is found at page six of that report. It starts from page six. Are we together? You can proceed, I can see it. So, there is a table there on the Bombardi that sets out the parameter, the attribute, the indicators, and the remarks. I think, Chair, maybe we are, we are, working, we are uh, having different reports. I am at Annex Chair D. This is the KA evaluation report of the PIP by Adani Airport Holdings. Hold, hold, hold a bit, we get it. Chair, I hope you'll not accuse me of taking too much time. It's the witness. No, Ted. <laughs> Which is page six. I think we are together now. You can proceed. We are together. Summary of the due diligence. I yes, think. you yeah. can see the, the parameter the attribute, the indicators, and the remarks. I want you to go to the uh, parameter on debarment, where you are required to have confirmation or verification to ensure that neither the proponent nor its affiliates are listed on either the World Bank and PPRA list of ineligible firms and individuals for engagement in procurement. You can see that. And on the remarks, it says, they provided a sworn notarized declaration. Is, is that reference to a self-declaration by Adani themselves? So they did not provide anything other than what they swore themselves. Is that correct? I need you to be on record, uh, Honorable CS, because you know this is answered. Chair, Chair I, I, I thought the member would just ask a question, then I respond. Because you are not responding. I have asked the, you're, you're, you're nodding the way your it should be conducted, Chairman? Yes. yes, sometimes we take that route, so it's okay. That's it's a very helpful. tedious route, but go ahead, yes, I can see. Honorable Chair, this is an acceptable comment from the Honorable CS. We sat here and listened to you, take us through your, for one hour. It was extremely tedious, and, and, and we did not complain. We didn't complain. So if you answer my questions, we will move quickly and get out of here as soon as possible. So you can see that it was a self-declaration, not the standard expected by the Act. Let's go to the question on corrupt practices. But, but Chair, Chair, with all due respect, why do you say it is not accepted by the Act? Can you cite the Act? You have said... You, are, you know that you want me to be saying yes or no. Uh, I don't agree with that. So can you go to the Act and cite that for me? On the Bombardi. Yes. You are required to provide confirmation that none of these people are listed on World Bank and PPRA list of ineligible firms. Surely that does not mean that they can tell you themselves that we are not listed. That is not the standard. Secondly, 
on corrupt practices. They have also provided a notarized declaration. That is a sworn so, affidavit. So can I just uh, respond? Yes. I, I have clear information that even though they did this sworn affidavit, it was confirmed through checking the website of World Bank to confirm the same. So if you want me to state that on record, I'm stating that that was checked and was found. Uh, was it is not in this report by K. Well, it did, you don't have to put everything on report, but I'm just reporting. That's no. why. Uh, it's okay. Pardon? Let, let's move on because I have very what, limited What I'm time. saying. Through you, Chair. You know, Allow, I'm under yes, us. Just through you, Chair. I mean, what, what is our brother? What has just happened to you? What are you saying? That they don't have to do that? That is exactly the crux of the matter of Adani. That is it, Bo John. If you don't see it, then we are wasting our time here. So, so, so I'm also reporting to you, Honorable Nyonga. You can have your opinion. My opinion is this. I'm under oath, and I'm stating as follows. The Evaluation Committee did check the World Bank sites and confirmed that that is the case. Through you, Chair, can I respond? Sure, in, sure this, in, the, in, the, in the report here, uh, that I, statement is made is propaganda. It's not there. I, I, as I had indicated, I think let's give uh, Senator his time. Then Thank you, uh, Proceed. You, you I was just making a point of information. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Chairman, Adjutant. over the page, over the page, the law again, CS, is that they are supposed to confirm that they are not subject to any current legal proceedings. That is over the page on the parameter of insolvency. Do you see that, uh, Honorable Chair? Honorable uh, CS, CS, if you know the, the, the that is, uh, you are asking about the criminal conviction. No, which one? The parameter insolvency. is insolvency. Yes, they I are supposed see. to confirm that they have not been suspended and an, is not subject to any current legal proceedings. Correct. Correct. Now, what did they provide in the column for indicators? 